Rohit, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, Porky? Absolutely, yeah. So first of all, glad to be here. Um, I've been following Tuesday Tech Talks for some time now. Uh, and I'm particularly interested about guardrails for LM, so thanks for having me here as well. For everybody else, I'm Rohit. I'm the founder of portkey.ai. Uh, we are essentially a operational operations platform for Gen AI apps. Uh, we call ourselves the control panel for AI apps. Now have over 600 teams in production using our uh, Gen AI platform. A little bit about myself, um, born raised in India, started working on Gen AI applications almost five years, five and a half years back. So I was building AI for customer support on GPT-2, uh, carried over to, to the private beat of GPT-3, then went on to build another product focused on uh, Gen AI for content marketing. And during that time, I think I figured all of the operational challenges in taking an application from a POC stage to production. And I felt these were just repetitive problems and everybody was trying to solve the same thing. Um, I figured that the opportunity was the same way DevOps created a very strong foundation for cloud computing back in 2009, 2010. We wanted to do something similar for uh, Gen AI. So we started thinking about what does a cloud flare for Gen AI look like, or what does the data doc for Gen AI look like? And that's where Portkey was born. Uh, we now have one of the most popular AI gateway uh, projects in the open source world. Um, and very glad that we launched guardrails also completely open source. Um, so yeah, um, we'll be talking more about that in which way. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So you've had quite a bit of time to work on some of this generative AI stuff. I think uh, it'll be great to get a lot of your insights today. So um, you said that uh, you guys started out with this, this gateway for um, generative AI. Uh, can you walk us a little bit through like how you kind of, you know, you built this gateway and then you decided to add guardrails to it. Now, I think we've seen a lot of talk around guardrails uh, online, um, but it'd be also good to just hear your perspective and see what you're, um, what you're seeing on your side. Yeah, I think guardrails are almost become, they've become an essential part of a production system for LLMs. Mm -hmm. And almost everybody's implementing it one in one way or the other. And I think we started with experimenting where people would just build guardrails within their application. Mm -hmm. But the same reason people moved away to a gateway where I don't want to manage these integrations myself. Uh, I want to be able to add providers easily. I want to switch signatures out conveniently. For all of these things, I think the same problems exist in guardrails as well. So okay. extremely critical part of the AI architecture but building it within your code and then having it sit right beside your code where it's not efficient, it's not flexible, you can't have it modularized so multiple teams can use it. Mm -hmm. All of those challenges come again in production. And that's where we wanted to put across a pattern where we said, how does guardrails on the gateway look like? So if you were to just build a lot of these guardrail functionalities on this proxy or any way using, Mm -hmm. uh, where we can run it more efficiently. You can add, remove checks at will. Multiple teams can use it. You have a central place to control it, monitor it, all of that. It seemed like this better together story. And yeah. that's what we're seeing with some early customers who started adopting this as well now, which is this makes their lives a lot more easier. And they can also control that every interaction that goes through my gateway has guardrails enabled on it. And I think this is also the direction that some of the larger hyperscalers are taking as well. So Azure launched content filters, AWS Bedrock has guardrails embedded now. So this seems like a pattern that's definitely going to become a lot more popular over the next six to eight months. Okay. Yeah. I think this makes sense. A lot of times we talk about guardrails and we talk about like, oh, like, you know, the LLM seems to be able to, uh, you know, conform to some certain set of things or have some sort of uh, you know, something baked in so they don't do anything dangerous to them. If I look at any production um, architecture, it looks a little bit like this. Now things are here and there a little bit, but more or less you have your Gen AI feature or application sitting here. Yep. And then to solve a variety of problems, you do a bunch of stuff, right? So you have your router caching set up, you have a proxy, multiple LLMs with their content filters mm -hmm. involved. You have a logger, prompt context management for RAG. 
and then you do this multiple times over for an agentic system. So yep. it's basic, but this is exactly how a production architecture looks like. Even if you look at the different blog posts by LinkedIn, Vimeo, Pinterest, almost everybody talks about an architecture like this. Mm -hmm. um, and the minute you start to scale this, it just becomes problematic. And that's where we moved into, this is what we're proposing. This is what we call the AI gateway pattern, mm -hmm. where now your AI application can be completely separated from the operational concerns of an AI gateway. Mm -hmm. Your application makes a request to the gateway, which has context, which is aware of all of the different LLM connections. Mm -hmm. And you can do this. Uh, you can start to make calls through the gateway. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is sort of this framework, uh, this platform is what we also open sourced and I'll show you a little bit about that. But one key component that we added very recently is what we call guardrails. And mm -hmm. guardrails have been around for a while. People were just building it within their applications. We felt it might be really cool to just build guardrails on the gateway itself. So I can build like a, almost think of it as a series of checks. So I have a checklist on the input and I have a checklist on the output to make sure that my inputs are not toxic. Um, they don't contain information that I don't want coming into my system. And my output is you know, well moderated. It doesn't contain competitor names. Uh, it has the right JSON schema, whatever you can imagine, right? So sure. the idea was to build a framework that allowed other people to then build their checklists within uh, the gateway framework. And the gateway can then do the orchestration, can be extremely fast. Your application doesn't have to take all of this load. 